So just around 48 hours ago, in the wee hours of the morning, a bunch of wild stuff was posted on 4chan, but specifically it was someone who claimed to have an early version of Mistral Medium 70B, and they posted this on 4chan calling it Miku, which is ironic in itself because Miku is the name of an AI waifu, and if you've been doing AI stuff long enough, you understand that joke. But the thing is, no one knew if it was real. There were some people who were debating, you know, whether or not this test proved it was real or this test proved it was some weird MOE implementation. People went back and forth. It was actually an entire ordeal for basically that entire day following and in the end we had a lot of people who were going to extreme lengths to show that it wasn't actually Mistral 70B. The funny thing is now those people might look a little bit funny because the co-founder and CEO of Mistral AI, Arthur Mensch, just confirmed the exact opposite. So I can say here officially that we can confirm that this leak was a earlier version of Mistral Medium. It's not exactly the same but the key is Everyone's been able to use Mistral Medium as an API for some time, so in theory, we have some really great ways of comparing this. So, how did we figure this out? What are the implications of this new model being open source, specifically the weights, not just access? And how can you use it right now? Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So what is this uh, smoking gun? So the first is the fact that someone actually figured out that the leaked model actually has a big M that was added to it. Now, at this point, we know who added that M. That was Arthur Mensch. So how did that get there? So basically, Arthur Mensch is the co-founder and CEO of Mistral AI, and he got on Twitter today to say this. An overenthusiastic employee of one of our early access customers leaked a quantized and watermarked version of an old model we trained and distributed quite openly. To quickly start working with a few select customers, we retrained this model from Llama 2 the minute we got access to our entire cluster. The pre-training finished on the day of the Mistral 7B release. We've made good progress since, stay tuned. The funny thing is we've known they've been working on these models for some time. And the idea that one of these made it out into the wild was, you know, this was bound to happen at some point. And the irony and the unique situation they're in is that Mistral AI eventually open sources everything anyway. Now, will this cloud their efforts moving forward? I don't really think so. Of course, it's a suck of time for uh, Arthur Mensch to have to get on Twitter and address this. But again, I think the big takeaway here is how much you should actually listen to people on Twitter who are tearing things apart and trying to tell you with more elaborate explanations why certain things aren't things as opposed to why things are things. And of course, eventually we will all learn from this, but this explains a lot of what we found just a few days ago. So obviously it was based on Llama 2. That is just not a real big surprise here. Uh, the other thing is the internal structure is probably a little bit different than people initially thought. The, the wildest thing we saw in the past day was people dumping the raw model and then looking at it in raw text format and then trying to extrapolate architectural attributes. And I should say, if you see someone doing that, even if they're a developer, they've probably just been up too late or just drank too much coffee. The details start to break down. And one thing I like to do on this channel is to try to give concise, balanced takes um, where I don't really take a side per se. And I think this is another perfect example of this being the case because, you know, the only way we get progress in a direction that helps this entire movement, whether or not you like EAC or not, is if it's accurate and there's not really something trying to prove one way or the other, right? Like it doesn't benefit me or not benefit me if this was actually the leak, but it's pretty cool that we know it was. And I think the approach that Arthur took to actually disclose this was pretty cool and that they were really open about it. And there was no question that yeah, like we're going to talk about it. Uh, if anything, I think they probably learned better ways to handle these kinds of disclosures in the future. Now, one thing that was kind of interesting is there were some initial kind of takes wondering why the performance of Miku 70B1 or Miku 70B2 were different than where Mistral Medium technically was benchmarking on MT Bench and Arena Elo. So what's interesting is it does totally make sense that Miku 70B was just an earlier version of Mistral Medium because it trades blows with GPT 3.5 with a score of 8.4, but the current Mistral Medium score is around an 8.61. So Anton, again, who you should just follow on Twitter if you like AI stuff. Uh, if he says here, I have some numbers on Mistral Miku 70B. The model scores highly on MT Bench right after Mistral Medium. Is this a legit leak? Uh, so 61% performance kind of makes sense because this was an older model. And what we also know here is that it did in fact pass human eval with uh, also with very similar numbers. The other huge thing to come out of this is someone actually quantized this at four bits and you can actually run this on a single collab with an A100 and 40 gigs of RAM. 
I think that's pretty cool. Initially, you would have needed at least a handful of A100s to run this. So if anyone wants to try this or is fine tuning this, um, please let me know. I can showcase your work or we can both kind of hack on this and see what's going on. And the other crazy thing is as of now, there are even GGUF quantizations that let you run this on M3. So what's crazy is it's pretty slow. Like you're only running at say 10 tokens per second, but you can run it locally now. Uh, so local llama, this, this should have support for this quite soon. And the funny thing is, I don't understand why people are getting up and saying, if this is true, I feel bad for the guys at Mistral AI because you have access to the API currently. And the irony is that um, the ethical considerations are kind of interesting here, but I want to give you a view on the other side of this. So uh, Pietro Sharan is another guy you should totally follow on Twitter. And he says that the leakage of Llama is what started an open source revolution. So on one side, it can foster innovation and accelerate in the space. On the other hand, it is definitely important to consider the legal implications, especially if used in a commercial setting. Now, my opinion here is this is a European talking about innovation, which is always going to be kind of a ironic um, or morally bankrupt conversation that this is never, but it is cool that he managed to run it in LM Studio. And frankly, the lines of quote unquote commercial use is something that still has to be legally determined. So where can you run Miku or just Mistral Medium? So where can you actually try this? So obviously there are certain ways you can run the Miku 70B uh, leak, which as we know now is just an earlier version of Mistral Medium that performs slightly less well. So. I would say right now, if you want, if you really want to try this out, uh, I would go to Perplexity, uh, specifically labs.perplexity.ai, and then select their uh, Mistral Medium and play with it there. Because the thing is, is it's effectively the same model. You just can't run it locally. Uh, I may make another video about how to run this on MLX, and we'll see if we get there. But this is how you do that right now. So you go to Perplexity AI, they do a bit of a check, and now just to be sure. We are going to go to Mistral Medium. And let's see what we can do here. So write a function. So let me say this. Uh, I need to understand the benefits and trade-offs of certain kinds of grain spawn for the pink oyster mushrooms. I'd like to grow for my organic restaurant, which is the best choice, but also a good financial decision. So we have a lot of context here. Let's see what this does. And I did want to start without a coding question, but I did want to start with something that was relatively technical. Because when you just start with pros, you kind of let these models off the hook quite easily and you give them a much better chance of hallucinating and then getting away with it. Okay, now, now to get a little bit more specific, let's say which grain is the easiest to prepare and doesn't have a high likelihood of being overcooked or ruined if it's not done perfectly. Now, I know the answer to this because this is what I did in high school. I worked at a mushroom factory. So let's see. Okay, so this is cool. It did understand that millet is the best but most delicate choice, and we'll see if it recommends something like sorghum. Let's see here. Okay, so we got close. Let me say, what do you think about sorghum? High nutritional content, rich in protein. So here, this is it. So sorghum is also relatively easy to prepare for grain spawn. Like millet, it can be sterilized by boiling or pressure cooking. They also mentioned it's a granular grain, so it's kind of a cylindrical, so these still have lots of uh, surface area. Uh, yes, they are larger and yeah, but less prone to spillage. Great, interesting, very interesting. So this is pretty cool. Definitely try out the Mistral Medium implementation on Perplexity. I think it's quite cool. I'm gonna play around with um, Miku 70B, but frankly, since we know what Miku 70B is now, 
It's a little bit less exciting, but I think the open source implications we're going to see going forward for the week will be incredibly cool. So are you guys gonna run this on local Llama? Or are you gonna just run it on Perplexity? Please let me know what you're gonna do in the comments below. As always, I hope you learned something in this video. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next video.